Colorado Oil and Gas Commission is aware of the situation and will probably be doing some additional testing in the area as soon as possible. Well, the bottom line is whose responsibility is it to take care of this problem? They're really going to have to look a little deeper into this because it does seem to be more widespread than Absolutely. we thought. Absolutely. Yeah. Very scary. Okay. All right, Heidi, thanks. So let's clear this up. Um, I'm not here uh, under the authority of EPA speaking on behalf of views that agency represents. I will put Weston Wilson not speaking on behalf of the EPA, although he works for the EPA. In 2004, the EPA was investigating a water contamination incident due to hydraulic fracturing in Alabama. But a panel rejected the inquiry, stating that although hazardous materials were being injected underground, EPA did not need to investigate. Weston Wilson, a 20-year veteran of the EPA, wrote a letter to Congress objecting. He also noted that on the peer review panel that authored the report, five of seven members appeared to have conflicts of interest and would benefit from the EPA's decision not to conduct a further investigation. They came out with a patently uh, ridiculous conclusion. They had showed it was toxic and then said it wasn't a risk. It made no sense and only in an Orwellian world would you accept that. From 1995 until 2000 when he became vice president, Dick Cheney was the CEO of Halliburton. One of the first things he did when he became vice president was to form what was known as the Energy Task Force. They met up to 40 times with industry leaders. They only met once with members from environmental groups. The Energy Task Force and a $100 million lobbying effort on behalf of the industry were significant in the passage of what's called the Halliburton Loophole to the Safe Drinking Water Act, which authorizes oil and gas drillers exclusively to inject known hazardous materials unchecked directly into or adjacent to underground drinking water supplies. It passed as a part of the Bush administration's Energy Policy Act of 2005. So all science at that point stopped? All science, all data, everything stopped. We were appalled about burying this kind of, maybe no pun intended, but <laughs> burying this, this secret uh, that it was known to be toxic. You know, when when the president says to its bureaucracy, uh, don't investigate, expedite things for industry, we do those jobs well, too. One could characterize this entire industry as having 100 years of history of purchasing those they contaminate. So they purchase the land and often with an agreement of secrecy of somebody that's alleging they've been contaminated by oil and gas production. So the industry itself has that type of practice. You're saying it's the... Industry itself should be proving it and not the people This who is are... America. We, we shouldn't be assuming that corporation can keep a secret, especially when they're practicing in our backyard. So the onus should be on the industry to prove to the government that their practice is benign and not that assumption. What you could be picking up from these citizens is what we should be investigating, but we're not. We're still asleep at the wheel. And don't assume since Obama got elected that uh, something's changed at the EPA yet in that regard. Even if it weren't true, they deserve an investigation. They're citizens of the United States. And they certainly don't deserve to be exposed to secret chemicals. It's not America. So I understand your question and your frustration, and you're seeing how this may be a pattern repeating itself. But so far, we're not on duty. We're not present as a government agency to answer your legitimate questions, and we must be directed to. And what I didn't know was that the 2005 energy bill pushed through Congress by Dick Cheney exempts the oil and natural gas industries from the Safe Drinking Water Act. They were also exempt from the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the Superfund Law, and about a dozen other environmental and democratic regulations. And when the 2005 energy bill cleared away all the restrictions, companies like Encana, Williams, Cabot Oil and Gas, and Chesapeake began to use the new Halliburton technology, and they began the largest and most extensive domestic gas drilling campaign in history, now occupying 34 states.